Hi friends, Namaste. Let's discuss today about the crystallizers used in process industries. Crystallizers are very common equipment used in any process industry, more particularly in petrochemical and pharmaceutical industries. Let's understand the role of crystallizers, their functionality, their applications, and what is in with respect to instrumentation and controls that are used in the industrial crystallizers. Now, crystallization is a technique used for the purification of substances, a separation technique to separate solids from a solution. Let's understand what is crystallization. It can be defined as the solidification of a liquid substance into a highly structured solid whose atoms or molecules are placed in a well-defined three-dimensional crystal lattice. The smallest individual part of a crystal is called a unit cell. The crystal is made up of millions of such unit cells. Crystallization is primarily employed as a separation technique in order to obtain pure crystals of a substance from an impure mixture. Another important application of crystallization is it's used to obtain pure salt from seawater. It can also be used to obtain pure alum crystals from an impure alum. In such scenarios, crystallization is known to be more effective than evaporation since it also removes these soluble impurities. It is more applied for the purification of seawater. It's all the different separation techniques, whether we call them as evaporation or we call them as condensation or crystallization or centrifugation and all these unit operations used predominantly in process industries are more of a separation techniques. Okay, the separation of alum crystals from impure samples also can be applied. In the pharmaceutical industry, crystallization is used as a separation and purification process for the synthesis and isolation of co-crystals. Pure active pharmaceutical ingredients, you know, normally called as active pharmaceutical ingredients, APIs, controlled release, pulmonary drug delivery, and separation of chiral isomers. This is uh, more applications. And then when we see the advantages, a product of high purity can be obtained from one single step with the process of crystallization. The dry products formed from crystallization can be directly packaged and stored. The energy requirements and the operating temperatures of this process are relatively low. If you try to understand the working process, there are five steps. In the first step, dissolve the solute in the solvent. You know, solute is which dissolves in a solvent. And when a solute dissolves in a solvent, we normally call it as a solution. Okay, so the solute is first dissolved in the solvent, then heat reactor to make the solute completely dissolved. Then slow cooling the reactor leads to pure crystals. So we are heating it to have a complete dissolution, then cooling it to lead to a purer crystals. Then in step four, vacuum filtration to get pure crystals. And then the recovered crystals are separated and sent for further processing. If you see the, you know, the physical phenomena or the chemistry, uh, what happens exactly, in the crystal growth over a period of time on the x-axis where you have polymerization and nucleation and then the crystal growth nucleation rate on the y-axis you will see the gel diffusion to equilibrium composition then you have the nucleation phase coming in here and then the during the crystal growth phase the nucleation rate slightly polymerization and nucleation goes down if you see the crystal growth on the other side, the nucleation rate is constant and the crystal growth is very, very low and the crystal growth gradually picks up as the nucleation rate increases with the period of time and this is the crystal growth rate. Okay, so this is exactly what you can see from polymerization to nucleation, you have a more uh, crystals happening and the condensation of the crystals happen more predominantly during the uh, crystal growth 
leading to its purification. So there are two predominantly used uh, crystallization process. One is evaporative crystallization and cooling crystallization. Though they are opposite in nature, cooling is as you go on reducing the temperature and evaporate and evaporation is nothing but you go on increasing the temperature. And this is a typical uh, industrial process where we have the crystallization uh, equipment used for different uh, uh, stages because they have to be, all these are literally the reactors uh, where the you know reaction takes place uh, in terms of um, solidification in terms of mixing in terms of dissolution or in terms of crystal growth and all these uh, things happen and all these are uh, you know highly insulated uh, vessels we normally call them as reactors if you see the draft tube uh, crystallizer um, we have the basic you know feed that is coming in here at the bottom and then the feed enters thing and you have a, a small pump basically to send it through the evaporator and uh, here the evaporator is nothing but a, a shell and tube heat exchanger where the vapor the feed is going through uh, in one direction on the shell side we have the steam coming in and giving off its heat to the uh, feed that is passing through this evaporator and the steam leaves as a condensate at the bottom. So then the vapors go up and then you have a separator where vapors are separated and the product is brought down from the bottom. That's exactly uh, we normally call it as a draft tube crystallizer. So then we have another uh, thing where we have a you know the feed is uh, sent here and then the seed is uh, feed is coming here and uh, uh, going through the um, heat exchanger then you have a circulation pump all through and on one side you have the coolant uh, coming in and then coolant going out this is uh, uh, literally the cooler the other thing which we saw was the evaporator model this is a cooling type of uh, crystallizer so when we have the feed coming in so coolant is uh, coming here then it is getting exchanged then the feed is entering uh, like this and then we have the uh, baffles and then the separation takes place uh, and then you know the this is how we normally the outlet is taken so then we have the other type of uh, centrifuge type um, you know where we have the uh, draft tube vapor goes out feed from the bottom uh, coming in then there is a um, you know there is a lot of um, uh, churning that is taking place. And then you have the um, annular uh, settling zone and the vapors escape and solids thing and the fines um, uh, reflex are taken from the thing and product is taken from the bottom. If you see the thing, feed is coming here, you know, getting um, vapors are getting escaped. Then this comes here and again goes thing and then as a feed escapes as a, a product. This all thing, everything you have to take it as an annulus thing, how it is escaping. Um, you know, annular settling zone you have and then the product is leaving here and the uh, fines reflex are again injected through this. So that's another uh, uh, example of a thing. So this is another model where we have a boiling chamber uh, to which, you know, the we have the uh, basic condensate coming at the uh, bottom. Then we have thermal energy giving in here and taking out. Then the, this is a wastewater um, inlet. And then these vapors are going through the heat exchangers, you know, exchanging the heat. Then it, your cooling water, then outlet uh, uh, cooling water. Then this particular feed is coming in here, then coming to the condensate tank and then uh, your distillate leaves from the bottom. So this is exactly what happens uh, in a, you know, we have both evaporation and uh, cooling type of uh, crystallization process in the air. So when the distillate comes here from this, it is sent to next stage of, uh, um, um, you know, crystallization. So this is another uh, uh, type where we have the you know, circulation pump at the bottom, we have the heat exchanger, steam coming in and condensate going out. This is a typical thing. Then we have a recirculation pump, which is sent into the 
body of the uh, then then the vapors are all going to cooling water um, uh, inlet here this is again a heat exchanger this is a barometric uh, condenser uh, because these vapors that are going up are condensed here and then the non condensable gases are sent from the top and then the body comes down. so this is all the other thing so basically we have the feed coming in here and going through this right and uh, it's getting heated up here through the steam and then the it is getting recirculated in the uh, chamber and the vapors go up and again get uh, uh, condensed here and come down and here the solids come here and the product goes here uh, as a product discharge through a pump so this is the total cycle of what happens in a uh, typical uh, crystallization process so then we have um, in this you will see you know the forced circulation crystallizer okay so this is a typical uh, thing what we have seen earlier okay this is just a, a different way of uh, um, explanation for thing because the feed is coming in here from the bottom you will see here feed is coming here and then going through the heat exchanger where it gets heated up then vapors uh, go up for further condensation at the top and then whatever the uh, solids getting uh, condensed come here and then they go for a product discharge this is one stage uh, we have in a forced circulation crystallizer cooling at the liquid surface results in super saturation that is relieved by crystal growth or the birth of a new nuclei high circulation rates enable evaporation of solutions with say, scaling solutes so the, it all depends on you know recirculation pump with what speed it recirculates the feed then we have another uh, type uh, where the feed is coming here at the bottom uh, you will see and then the recirculation pump it is going through the heat exchanger um, you know heater uh, and then condensate then this vapor is going vapor compressor and the vapor is going up here mist extinguisher then it is a vapor body then it gets crystallized and then the crystals come and uh, you know the crystals uh, to centrifuge for filter so whatever the crystals that are uh, coming in here and you know, they just go out for a next stage centrifugation for further filtering so oslo crystallization is another uh, thing where we have the same uh, similar thing which we have the um, uh, pump here and live stream is coming crystal slurry is taken out it is going through the heat exchanger vapor goes up and then it is for uh, purging and uh, crystal slurry is taken out for further processing through a centrifuge okay inspection then the uh, you have all the uh, other things there are several things like this different types of uh, um, crystallizers where you will be using so the control of crystallization generally is more complex uh, because the mix the slower will be the tendency for crystallization to occur therefore um, because of their more complex structures the process will get delayed and decayed with the onset of crystallization at room temperature about two parts sucrose can be dissolved in one part of water giving a concentrated solution of approximately 67% if the solution is cooled without agitation it becomes super saturated and upon further cooling especially with agitation the sucrose crystallizes you have the anti solvent food con feed concentrate anti solvent then both are coming here automated uh, process control you can have a plc which will be which will have a flow meters and then inline mixture then we have a, it goes to the uh, crystallizers okay from which uh, you have again the control in terms of here and then you also have a uh, flow meter here and wet mill so seed generation that takes care in another set of uh, crystallizers so another control is basically you have the feed here tank you have one level uh, control and then level uh, measurement like a level transducer and this is a level controller which will which is comparing with the set point the output controller is sent to the level control valve and uh, because when it is taking out from the uh, bottom um, you know it maintains the level by sensing the through level uh, transmitter 
okay level transducer senses it it comes below this then it will um, uh, reduce the uh, you know the output of the pump so that the tank always maintain certain level with respect to the set point then the uh, crystallizer we have you know feeding uh, stream multiplexer through multiplexer you are giving a standard flow rates of uh, 0.025 meter cube per second of the feed mm, or uh, zero then we have 1.4 kg per second or 2.575 kg per seven and these are all microprocessor control one microprocessor control two microprocessor control three and four this will enable the digital system to do the set point one set point two set point three and set point four so set point one you are giving 0 0.025 meter cube per second Set point two, you are giving only um, whatever the uh, system value, and then set point three, you are setting it for certain value. Set point four, you are giving it for 1.4 kg force per second. And uh, this is how you will be, uh, you know, using a multiplexer, how the feed and steam is let into the crystallizer uh, in order to control the supersaturation, right? And uh, that's exactly a, a completely controlled system of crystallization that's taking place. Okay, so this is a typical instrumentation involved. So you will have the uh, all the valves, flow meters, um, and then uh, uh, the actual regulation of the uh, flows uh, that is taking place and completely uh, controlled. And uh, through which through this uh, you will be uh, sending the the exact quantity of the feed and to this and the steam into the uh, crystallizers for a proper mix of the crystallization process to take place. So that's exactly uh, what it is uh, about the crystallizers. Thanks a lot.